And uh, once again, welcome to Lifeline Church. My name is Tiffany, and my husband Elliot and I get the great joy and privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. You know what time it is. Let's celebrate because it is great to be Lifeline Church. Uh, I um, just now was thinking through that that little that groovy music right there. Over the summer, over the month of July, I read a book. We're in this prayer series, and I read this book called uh, Prayer is Invading the Impossible. It's a really old book by Dr. Jack Hayford, Pastor Jack Hayford. If you know him, he goes by several names. Anyway, I was giving my friend a book review because I was telling her I read some books. And that book, Prayer is Invading the Impossible, I was like, it's like a good song. You know, when you hear a good song, you just want to get up and dance. That book book was like, you just want to pray. You just want to get up and pray. And I was thinking that song, that book, you know. Anyway, if only all of our prayer times were infused with like, yeah, I just, I just want to get up and pray. Uh, we have a mission here at the church, and it is to, you can say it with me if you know it, be a lifeline. And we do that by leading people into becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. Everywhere, every space, every place, Jesus is going to direct us and guide us. And we believe that. And so it's our heart and our mission to make sure we know the love of the Father. We know the love of the Son. And He is a part of every aspect of our life. Um, We're going to jump into the message pretty soon, but before we do that, I just want to bring a couple things to your attention. Number one is we do like to provide fill-in-the-blanks for you if you guys are note-takers. So there's a bulletin. If you walk through the doors, you were offered a bulletin. You may or may not have taken it inside. uh, There's sermon message notes, and there's fill-in-the-blanks, so you can take that out now if you'd like to follow along. And then we also have a digital version of that on our U version. It's not our U version. We did not create it. There's a Bible app called U version, and in U version, We have an events tab, so you can go there. You can find that and follow along there as well. And then life groups. Next week, everybody say next week. Uh, Our life groups are launching, so everybody be here next week. The groups have already been live on the Church Center app where you can find them. You can scroll. You can find there's men's groups, women's groups. There's a group playing pickleball every Sunday, so if you don't know how to play, they're going to teach you to play because it's all the rage right now. Uh, There's groups for walking, all kinds of groups. Uh, So those are already open. You can begin to look at them on Church Center. Find one that you're interested in or one on a day or time of the week that will work for you. And what's really cool is next week, week, all of our group leaders are going to be out. So in between both services, so after the first service and after the second service, so no matter what service you come to, uh, the group leaders are going to be out with information. So you can interact with those who are leading the group, get more information, sign up in person if you want to do that. So be here next week, bring friends, bring family, bring people who you just think need community, but don't tell them that. (laughs) Uh, Because groups really make a difference. We believe transformation happens in relationship. In the context of relationship, we are transformed. Uh, Uh, And so we believe in the power of life groups do that. Uh, And now I'll just go ahead and jump right in. How many dice players do I have in the room? You know, there's card players. We got dice players. We got one, one dice player. Okay, I, you can probably tell by looking at me that I'm not a gambler. (laughs) Never tried. I would lose everything in just one moment. Uh, But when I was growing up, we used to play this game called Bup Kiss. Anybody heard of Bup Kiss? A zilch zero. Anyway, okay, is this black? It's a container. Dice games. You ever played Yahtzee? What have Yahtzee players? What's the deal with all the noise? You know, like the, there's the plastic dice inside the plastic cup on your hardwood table. All you need ibuprofen before you play that game. Otherwise, you're going to walk away with a headache. Anyway, there's, I used to play a game called Bupkis, and it was like five or six dice, and you, you roll them. And the object of the game is you get, you get to keep rolling as long as you're scoring. And it's the game of chance, because as long as you're scoring, you get to keep rolling, and your, your points are building on top of each other. But as soon as you bust you bust and you lose all your points. So you have to, you have to gamble. You have to like, I'm either going to take that, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to get the high number or I'm going to settle for this low number because I feel like I'm going to bust on the next one. Uh, But then there's, you know, the game of craps, which I've never tried to play in my life, but I've seen in every bad guy video that Elliot ever made me watch. (laughs) What's the name? Not video, movie. I can't remember. All those gangsters, you know, the mob, the mafia, and they got to play games and you're in the casino. Um, you know that quote? Because uh, if you roll, if you're playing dice and it's, it matters and you only got the two dice and then you roll 
snake eyes, you know, those two ones that are meaningless, and you played the game, you, you took the risk, you thought you were going to win big, you gave it all you had, and all you came up were with snake eyes. Uh, what's that quote? It's probably from a movie, uh, baby needs a new pair of shoes, and all I got is snake eyes. <laughs> Daddy needs a new pair of shoes, and all I got is snake eyes. I feel like sometimes... Some of us can be kind of that way with prayer. You know, it's, it's a game of chance. I'm going to roll the dice and I'm going to see what happens. But it's a game of chance. It's a game of luck. I'm going to throw that prayer up and maybe the Lord's going to answer it. Uh, maybe he's not, but there's no real guarantee in that game that I'm playing. Uh, and that's not who the Lord is. We've been in a series on prayer. We're closing it today. It's called The Big Ask. And this, the title of the message today is Just ask. <laughs> Just ask. And so we're going to talk about that. But we have an enemy of our soul. Uh, even if you don't know the Lord yet, you're kind of on the fence about putting your faith and your life in Jesus and believing that he's the son of God and that he loves you and he cares for you and he has a plan and a purpose for you. You may know that. You may not know that. You may be dancing on the fence of it. Regardless of what we believe, there is an enemy of our soul who wants nothing better than to keep us away from the presence of the living God, who wants to keep us trapped in darkness and fear and confusion and doubt, and as if we're playing a game of chance. There is a God up there, but it's 50-50 on whether or not he's going to hear you. It's 50-50 on whether or not he's going to answer that specific prayer of yours. And so there, there may be times where we're believers, diehard believers in who the Lord is and what he can do, but sometimes we come up against a situation or a circumstance or a mountain or an event, and even then, our faith, we question our faith. We, there's a sense of doubt, like, is the Lord going to answer that? And so just ask is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, kind of a Tiffany-ism. This is the way I talk. This is a big idea. God wants us to ask him for things, for all the things, for everything. He wants us to ask for all the things, for everything. But we have a thousand reasons, if we're honest in our minds, we have a thousand reasons why we don't come to him. And why we don't just ask him for things. And so today what I want to do is just, there's going to be a reason and a truth. Newsflash, the truth is going to be the same for every fill in the blank. <laughs> so if you're taking notes, you can just find the truth section. That blank is the same. But we're gonna, I'm going to list a few reasons why we don't pray uh, and then give us the truth that God would say to us. So reason number one why we don't pray often is we just don't know what to pray for. We don't know what to pray for. Like, I got a lot of things, but of the game of chance that I'm going to play, which one of these is he going to answer? And I don't know, so I don't even ask. We don't know what to pray for. Uh, but let's settle it with some truth right up front. God is the creator. He's the source of all things. This is kind of funny when you think about it, but God's storehouse is not in short supply. In other words, he's not rationing answers to prayer as though there was a shortage on his ability to give, to provide, to heal, or to produce. There's no shortage. He's not running out. There is no lack in his kingdom. And so when you're dealing with the source of all things, absolutely nothing is a problem. Absolutely nothing is too big. Absolutely nothing is too small. Absolutely nothing is impossible with who he is. And we've been kind of drilling down on that problem, that reason uh, during the whole series. And we hope and pray that through this whole series, and we've been hearing testimonies, that you are feeling, the church, you are feeling more equipped and better equipped and having tools available to you like the Pray First app. That should go back up on the screen if you have not yet downloaded the Pray First app. It's not going anywhere. So our 21 days of prayers over today. We've been in a series of, and a time of during this series doing 21 days of prayer. And that app's not just going to disappear. So if you've already been using the app, keep on using it. And if you haven't used it yet, you're still kind of dancing around this prayer idea. Even if you never use it, just download it. Uh, and maybe in two weeks or a month from now, you'll be scrolling through all the apps on your phone and you'll remember, oh, what's this? And you'll open it and maybe you'll begin to use it, but it's a tool, it's a resource, and it's helpful. And so reason we don't know what to pray for. Truth, God's will is that we ask, <laughs> but I don't know what to ask for. Elliot hit this idea pretty hard last week, and it was with the story of the, the persistent, they, they come middle of the night knocking on the door. It's, just, you know, it's in the scripture, we've read about it. Knocking on the door, and it's midnight, the friend says, go away. But because of his persistence, his shameless persistence, the man gets up and gives the other man what he's asking for. And the, the big idea is God's will is that we are confident enough in who he is just to ask. 
even if we don't know what it is, in your, blah, 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 you know, words. Because <laughs> that's how it feels like sometimes, you know, like you don't even know what you're saying. Even when you don't know what it is, just ask. And so many of us, I love this because in this series, we haven't played videos or anything like that, but almost every week I have heard testimony of the Lord answering prayer. I have, I just uh, a couple weeks ago when I spoke, I, I told a story about how I was really dealing with something and I was trying hard to fall asleep and I couldn't. And then I told that story about how I just, I actually began to pray about it instead of just think about it. I connected with the Lord. And there was one person that that really resonated with and their testimony was that all week long they practiced that. And every time they practiced it, they went right into deep sleep. A person who doesn't get very good sleep, they almost always, when they track their sleep, they get a 65% score. Jumped up all the way into the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> that's answered prayer. And more than that, more than just sleep, sleep matters because if you want to be a good person the next day, you better be well rested the night before. That makes a difference in all of life. But the very simple things have been the Lord is answering. And so those are that's you. That's the church calling on your creator in heaven and he is answering. He is fulfilling your prayers. And so I, I love that so much. So I just say this, keep on going. Keep on asking. Keep on using that prayer app. Keep on finding tools that are going to help you in engage in prayer. Matthew 7, 7 says this, it's from Jesus, and he says, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Don't give up. Keep on seeking, and you will find. If you keep looking for me, if you keep figuring out what the right thing is to ask for, I'm going to come through for you. You're going to find me. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. He's going to open the door. So reason number two why we don't pray is we are hesitant to ask for something that we're not sure if we should have. Anybody? <laughs> we are hesitant to ask for something we're not sure if we should have. So we worry sometimes about knowing exactly what to pray for in some cases because we feel like we know what to pray for in other ones. <laughs> and so because all of a sudden we feel insecure about this issue or what to ask for here, we're hesitant to engage because we're not sure if we should have it and we're not sure how to ask for it. But again, when you think through your prayer life, even the, the, the prayers that the Lord is answering right now, have not our prayers been imperfect? when we've asked, when the Lord has answered the prayer, and you go, man, I prayed for that, and you realize it was more of a flare prayer uh, than a real engagement with your emotion and what you wanted to see happen and the fallout of what that would look like. In our imperfect understanding, in our imperfect ask, our God has come through. Uh, and this is, again, kind of a funny thing, but God was not befuddled by that imperfect. He wasn't shaken up. It didn't bother him. Our ignorance... Our ignorance did not clog the wheels of the universe and go like, oh, your stupidity didn't keep me from, like, that's not, that's not who our God is. Um, sometimes when we're uncertain about how boldly we may ask our good father for things, it's as if our guts, you know, because we feel things in our gut, you know, your tummy does things and you're like nervous or excitement. It's as if our gut is saying, I'm afraid to ask for this because I might confuse the Almighty. I might confuse the Almighty if I ask for this. Maybe, you would never say this, but once it gets heard, you're like, oh, okay, that, mi that might be what's happening on my insides. I may just force God's hand to violate his own eternal purposes and suddenly bring our world to a crashing halt <laughs> because I asked for this one thing and because I asked for it, God has to give it to me even though he didn't really want to. <laughs> sometimes we don't ask because we wouldn't say that out loud but when you come face to face with reasons why we don't ask that may be it we think we on some level and that would be a lie and a scheme of the enemy to keep us from asking that we're so powerful <laughs> that even our ask will confuse the universe and the truth is again it's going to be the same God's will is that we ask um, it's as though sometimes we don't ask because we think somehow <laughs> God's going to find himself awkwardly glancing toward earth, wondering, how did I ever let that happen? I have got to be more careful in my answers to prayer. <laughs> like, okay, let me remind you of something that you intrinsically already know. He is mature enough to do what is best. He is good enough to do what is right. He is secure enough to say no. And he is loving enough 
to invite you to ask. (laughs) I love that. Those are all of our fears. I'm not secure enough to say no sometimes, even though I know no is the best thing I could say. My God is not that way. So he's going to invite me lovingly to ask him, and then he's going to gently lead he's going to gently lead me in another direction, but he is secure enough, he is mature enough, and he is good enough. Uh, life groups are starting soon. I already talked about that. And in your groups, uh, in life groups we 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 take prayer requests. So when things are going on in life, we say, you know, is there anything we can be praying with you about? How's this going in your life? We're not going to be invasive or intrusive, but we care about people and we want the Lord to answer the things that we need in life. And so there's opportunity to pray for things. And in your group, you may have something that you're dealing with and you, you want to bring it to the group. You're, you're fearful and it takes a whole ton of confidence with sweaty palms to offer what it is that, that you want prayer for. And then something else comes up in the group and it may seem like a more significant ask. I've been in groups, I've been in life groups where we've been submitting prayer requests and maybe someone had back pain, they had some things going on with their back and so they just, like, I just want the group to pray that 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 will be healed or the doctors would have wisdom or whatever. And then the next person says that they got a bad report and they're battling cancer. And then what happens is the person with back pain says, oh no, that that request is bigger. That that need is bigger. Don't pray for my back pain, but let's all just go ahead and pray for, for them. Let's pray for the situation with cancer. And while that may seem like a, a, like a humility, humble, the right thing to do, let me remind you that God's will is that you ask. And God is big enough to handle both requests. He's not going to... He's not going to not do the one because this one is bigger. Our God is not in short supply. His storehouse is not running out of things. He can give all the things all the time. He is not rationing his answers to prayer. Here's... So I invite you, when, when things like that come up in your group, God is able to do both, and to ask for both is what the Lord is inviting us to do. Isaiah 59, 1, let this scripture just hurt so good. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is his ear too dull to hear. <laughs> he is not dumb. He already knows that the he already knows the request is there. He already knows the burden is there. He already knows that you've been privately mulling over it. And he says, "Bring it to me. Bring it to me boldly, and and let me answer it in the midst of all the prayer requests that you think are bigger." Another translation says it this way: "Listen, the Lord's is not the Lord's arm is not too weak to save you." nor is his ear too deaf to hear you call. And so ask the Lord for things, for all the things, for all the things, for everything, because he wants you to. It made me think of this, be the kid in the room who thinks his dad is the best dad ever and can do anything. (laughs) Have you ever been in a room with two little boys? Not in a weird way. Have you ever been in a room... Like, I have a seven-year-old son, and he's got a really good friend, and sometimes they'll come over, and we'll be sitting around the dinner table eating and snacking, and they will talk about the most random nonsense. And it doesn't matter what the nonsense is, they are in competition with each other. Oh, yeah? Well, this, you know, I can do this better. I, I have more of this, or yada, yada. And then you bring in any kind of, like, my son happens to have an older brother who's 19, and so everything, like, nothing beats having a 19-year-old brother, you know? Like, when you got a 19-year-old older brother, you can do anything, he can do anything, your dad can do anything. That's how the Lord wants it. You know what? <laughs> I got an older brother, and he can do anything. And that's what the Lord says. The Lord Jesus himself said, who are my mother and my father? Who are my brothers and sisters? He, another, one of the ways that Jesus refers to us is he is your brother. <laughs> and so how cool is it to shift our perspective and be like, man, and you know, older brothers, like they're going to... They're gonna, they're gonna risk, you know, their reputation. They're gonna uphold it. That older brother is coming through for you. You can count on it, right? Like, let's be the people in the room. I got an older brother and he can do anything. Oh, yeah, I got a dad and he can do anything. And so we ask, like, how embarrassing is that, though, really? Like, <laughs> we're a little bit more composed and put together. And maybe on the inside, we want to feel that way, but no way with our life. No way with our ask. No way are we going to be so undone that that's how our... But yes, let's humiliate ourselves before our King, and He's going to come through for us. And that humiliation, however embarrassing it may be for the people watching, when your God comes through for you, it's worth it. 
it's worth it. Okay, another one. Another reason is we are hesitant to request God's action when we feel we lack the facts. Another way to say that is because we're not sure what God's will is. I don't know what God's will is, and so I'm not sure how to ask him to respond to this request. I can see it, I need it, but I don't know what his will is. And here, let's get it all tangled up and confused because what the enemy does, it says in in scripture, the enemy knows scripture. And what he does is he uses it against us. He takes it out of context and he uses it against us. It says the, like they, the demons know scripture. They know Jesus and they shudder. They are aware of his presence. And when his scripture and his truth is rightfully employed, they have to go. And so there's, there's, a, there's a twisting of scripture and a twisting of our understanding that the enemy will do. And so the counter to that is just keep reading the word. Keep on asking the Lord to minister you. Keep on asking the Lord, help me understand your word as truth and help me understand how to employ it in my life because your word is what sets me free, okay? So we're hesitant to ask when we, when we don't know the facts, when we're not sure what God's will is. In other words, again, back to our guts because we feel things in our guts. We make decisions on our guts, on our emotions. We know we shouldn't, but sometimes we do. Our guts believe that God isn't hearing us because we don't, we're sure that we don't know his will. Because one of the scriptures is this, Scripture tells us if we ask according to God's will, he hears us. If we ask according to God's will, he hears us. So what happens is our insides go, I'm not, I'm absolutely positive. I have no idea what God's will is. And so even if I ask, he's not going to hear me because I'm asking wrongly or I'm not asking right. I don't know how to ask. Uh, So let me be quite blunt. (laughs) I'm going to be very blunt with you right now. The discovery of God's perfect will is not going to happen because you spent lots of time in agonizing thought trying to figure out what it is. You will not reason your way into finding God's will. You, you will not, you cannot. That's not how the Lord says it's gonna happen. And so you can spend all the time in ag- agonizing thought you want trying to figure out the best way to make this ask. You can sit with it, you can stew with it, you can let it cause you anxiety. It's not gonna solve the problem. You will not find his will that way. You will not discover it because you declare forcefully things you have been taught, but you don't really understand. You're not going to find it that way. You will not discover it based on having your personal opinions about how you think God does or ought to do things. (laughs) Just because you think this is how God should do things, you will not discover his will this way. To the contrary, you guys are going to love this. God tells us how to discover his will through praying. (laughs) The only way you discover his will is to take the risk and pray anyway, to just ask. He doesn't tell you to find his will and then pray. Solving God's will before you ask doesn't need to be an added problem for you to solve. (laughs) I release you from that burden. You do not have to know his will before you ask. The truth is, God's will is that we ask. James chapter 1, verse 5, if you need wisdom. How many of you would agree with the fact that if you need to know God's will, that's wisdom, right? And he says, if you need wisdom, ask. <laughs> ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. So you can be sure of this, God will not criticize or mock you for coming to him and asking, like, I, I, this is what I want. I'm not sure I know what your will is, and so I need wisdom. <laughs> it's not that difficult. Uh, this is my problem. I think in permanence. So if I'm going to ask for something or do something, I'm going to do it all the way, and I'm going to do it right, and it's going to be perfect the first time. Anybody? 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 No, like, you got to just get over it. You know, like, honestly, I want to do this perfectly, and I want to get it right the first time, and I want to know exactly what to ask for, but I literally have no idea. So, Lord, help me to ask. Help me to figure that out. And that is asking. And he comes, and he answers, and he works out our need to be perfect. Uh, In this subset of thought, though, probably the biggest fear of all, or biggest reason why, why we don't ask, is that fear of rejection. What if God's answer to my prayer is no? So the reason that we don't ask sometimes is that we fear being told no. It's like there's this sense in our heart that says, I already have a sense in my heart and on my insides 
that the answer is no. And I don't want that answer confirmed. So I'm just not going to (laughs) ask. Maybe you've never been there. I know I have. But now that we're all kind of looking at that elephant in the room, though, fear. What if God says no? More than, it, more than what if he just says no, what if he rejects me? Um, what, if, what if I'm completely wrong? And like whatever it is, there's a sense of rejection. If I draw near, it's not going to go well with me. And so I, I want to believe in him. I want to have faith in who he is. I want to be a part of his family. But I want to stay where I'm safe enough you know, because we've been in relationships in our, in our personal lives and in workplace situations, coworkers or family members where we let down our guard a little bit and we got in, involved and we became close and, and intimate or uh, whatever and then something happens and then there was that, that rejection. I'm not as loved as I thought I was. They didn't come through for me in the way they said they would or I thought they would based on what they said to me. And so we transfer that over to the king. We transfer that over to the creator, over to our father. And I, I want to stay in your presence, but I don't, I don't want you to know the fullness of what's going on in my heart. Because I, honestly, I'm not, and if you, if you dig deep in that, it's I'm not sure that you can handle it. <laughs> I'm not sure that you can treat me well, and I want to be treated well. There's, there's a lot going on in there. So now that we're kind of looking at that elephant in the room, I want the Lord to speak to it. Because scripture says that, he is love. It says that his word is truth, and the truth is what sets us free. And it says it sets us, the truth sets us free from fear. There's another scripture that says there is no fear in love, for perfect love casts out fear. <laughs> How many of us want to be free from fear? <laughs> and all those insides where we want to be able to genuinely, truly ask our Lord and Father and Creator for things, no fear involved. He can see us holy. Uh, and so this is perfect love. The Lord has let us know some things. Um, his answer to the deep longings of your heart, to my heart, to our heart, is never no. I, I want you to know that. His answer genuinely is never no. But he will deal with some things that stand in our way before he delivers on the promise. And that is a good God because he is mature enough, he is good enough, he is secure enough, okay? Um, so this is, this is what it is. I'm not going to read these scriptures. You can read them on your own. They're in your notes everywhere so you can find them and refer back to them. James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, talking about people coveting. You, you, you don't have... Uh, because you don't ask and you don't ask because of all this stuff. But before that, it was coveting. You want what other people have. And so what he says in that prayer is prayers of self-indulgence will not be answered. So if you, and this is what I want to get to, if we're dealing with jealousy in our hearts, if we're dealing with the fact that I'm not okay and I'll never be enough until I have what that person has or until my life looks like that person, and so I'm asking for the things that I see over here, the Lord will not bring a yes answer. But because you are asking, he will begin to purge those things from you. And then after they're they're purged, he'll go, is that still what you really want? And then in doing that, you'll realize, no, that's not what I really want. I want this because your will for my life is this. And so prayers of self-indulgence will not be answered. That's a guarantee. You can count on it. It is guaranteed. Uh, That's good news. Okay, Luke chapter 9, verses 51 through 56. This is the, the one person who's praying. Um, And it says, presumptuous attitudes in prayer will not be honored. Presumptuous attitudes in prayer will not be honored. So if you're going to the Lord and you're asking him for things, but you've got an attitude in your heart that definitely believes that you are better than this other person over here, and you're praying for something to happen between you and the Lord or a blessing here, but you you absolutely believe, you're operating in pride. There's an arrogant spirit about you. That prayer will not be honored. The Lord will deal with it. (laughs) That's a guarantee. So if you got that stuff, and these are encouraging because if they're going on in your heart, the Lord's invitation to you is come ask me for help in that area. Let me deal with that first, and then I'll give you an answer over here. His invitation is still good. Psalm 66, 18, prayer offered from a heart that is simultaneously plotting disobedience, (laughs) obviously, will not even be heard. Okay, so you're asking the Lord for things, But in your mind, you 100% are planning to be disobedient in some other area. 
you know the things because they prick your heart and they kind of make you uneasy and queasy and you just try and, you know, stuff them down and you're pretending like they don't exist. You just want God to come through for you in this area, in this place. And he says, if you're plotting disobedience, I will not hear you. I will not answer that prayer. Guess what? He's going to deal with the other thing though. And I, again, that's where our fear comes. We fear rejection. We fear being told no. Because we already know there's some things going on in our life. Will the Lord answer this prayer of mine when I, I, I know I've got this going on and I'm not sure how to fix it? The Lord's will is that you just come and ask in your brokenness, in your humility, in your honesty. You come and you ask. Matthew chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. Asking for something while tolerating unforgiveness towards others. This is harsh. It blocks even the provision of our most basic needs. There's a quote from Dr. Jack Hayford. He says, God refuses, I'm going to let this sink in, God refuses to raise a breed of sons and daughters who are unlike him. He absolutely refuses to. And because these traits are not in his nature, he's not self-indulgent, he is not presumptuous, he is not simultaneously. He's not double-minded. He's not plotting disobedience, and he is not unforgiving. Because these traits are not in his nature, he confronts them in ours. <laughs> that hurts so good. You know, he confronts those things in ours, and he does it when we come to him in prayer, because he is good. He is mature enough to say no, secure enough to say no. And he's loving enough to invite us to ask, even in all of our stuff, come to me, son, come to me, daughter, bring all the things, bring your brokenness, bring your uncertainty, bring your, your insecurity, bring your failure to understand how to fix this and just come into my presence and ask me, let me help you. And that got kind of heavy. And so the encouragement in that last part is you do not need to be all knowing in order to have your prayers heard and answered. And you do not need to have arrived at some level of holiness or greatness in order to have your prayers heard and answered. You do not need a record of great accomplishments of faith to have your prayers heard and answered. You do need to be honest, straightforward, and open with God, your maker, your creator, your father. The truth is, God's will is that you ask. John 15, 7 says this, If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, that is, if we are vitally united, and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. It's as simple as that. If we remain connected, if you let me live in you, if you let me into your day-to-day, -day, if you remember me in your moments, then I'm connected with you. And if you ask, I will come through for you. If you ask, I will hear. If you ask, I will answer. In other words, if you have an honest posture, honest to God posture in your heart that says, God, I really do want your will. Would you help me to ask for it? God's answer to you is ask, pray, and I'm going to work on it. I love that. I love that so much. So when you draw near to the Lord, he draws near to you. And if, if you can draw near with honesty in your heart about what's really going on in your life and in your mind, then he can work on it. He is gently able to work on the things in your life, in our lives, that may be hindering what he wants to do. And because he is good, he's going to invite you to ask for all the things that you've been too afraid to ask for. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you so much for who you are that you are good, you are God, you are our creator, you are our maker. More than just us, you created the heavens and the earth, the universe. You see every person in every nation, in every place, in every time, and yet you still know us by name. You still see us when we go to sleep and you see us when we wake up. You see us in our sleeping. 
you see the deep anxieties and fears and longings of our heart that we're too afraid to bring to you, but that we wrestle with in our dreams and in our sleep and when we're all alone. And you are so good that you keep drawing us closer and closer and closer. And it's because you want us comfortable enough in your presence that we could bring those things to you and ask. And so I thank you, God, that you have been doing that. You have been drawing us into your presence. You have been showing us your goodness. You have been increasing our confidence in who you are. And we are becoming more secure because we know the lover of our souls. You are good, God. If there's anybody in the room, I'm just going to give you an opportunity. If you don't know the Lord like that, you've been dancing on the fence about giving the Lord everything in your life, but there are some things, and you've, you've been seeing that God is good, the Lord is good, and you want that relationship. You want to open that door. I just want to invite you to raise your hands, and I'd love to, to pray with you and celebrate. Amen, I see your hand. Amen, I see your hand coming into amen i see your hand a living relationship god you're so good i mean i see your hand amen i see your hand every hand is a soul every every soul is a person go ahead and just repeat this after me if you would the whole church together father god i thank you for who you are i thank you for revealing yourself to me i thank you for drawing me close and I thank you for your son, Jesus. Help me to understand his sacrifice. Meet me in my deepest need. I repent of sin for doing things in my own strength. I want your will. I want your way. Please fill me with your spirit and lead me to do what is right. Amen.